In the last video, I explained word to vec and CBAO and the Scriptgram model. And uh, just to get some, you know, that video was more for the understanding of the concept and how it worked. Uh, but there's a sometimes useful to also get an understanding of how it actually looks uh, like in code. And uh, it's not going to be very particularly difficult, I think, but um, uh, it's going to be 50 or 60 lines of code. And then uh, hopefully you'll get a better understanding of how this works. Now, this will only be sort of a simple implementation of CBAO. Uh, there are more things you can do for sure uh, to make it uh, actually perform and, and so on. And I'll touch on that at the end of the video. So to start, I've just put some imports here. And uh, we're going to start with actually implementing the CBAO model. Uh, and so this is going to be pretty simple, uh, but uh, if you recall, the CBAO model takes as input some context uh, of the surrounding words, uh, specifically, to, well, the hyperparameter, but two before and two after, for example, and then it wants to predict the word in the middle uh, of that. And then we're going to map each word into some embedding size, let's say 100. And then uh, we also have some vocab size. Let's set it to default to maybe minus one. And then we have to call super. And so let's initialize the embeddings. Embeddings are going to be nn dot embedding of, uh, let's see, a vocab size to embedding size. So it maps, uh, it, it has it's basically a matrix where we have the vocab size to be the number of uh, rows in our matrix and the columns are the embedding uh, size. So each word is mapped onto some size uh, that we call embedding size. And then we have a linear layer at the end, which is to embedding size to the vocab size. Because again, we want to predict the word, right? So we're going to map it to vocab size. We're going to take like a, an argmax of that basically, like take the largest element uh, as its prediction, and that's our output. And so that's, you know, that's what we're going to learn through using uh, cross entropy loss. All right, so then we have forward self inputs. And remember here, the inputs are going to be batch size, uh, in this case, times, uh, well, context times two. Uh, but context here, if let's say context is two, then we're going to have batch size times four. And then we will do our embeddings, which will do self dot embeddings of input. Now this is going to be, let's see, this is going to be uh, batch size times four times uh, embedding size, so 100. Uh, but now what we want to do is we want to use all of this as input to, to uh, and average them. So um, we will take uh, the mean out of all of these four different context words mean of one. And so now we've removed this, this will be times one. Uh, and then to just uh, remove that one, we'll do squeeze of one. So the output here will be batch size times 100. We will then send out that uh, we'll do return self dot linear of embeddings. So, you know, as you can see here, the CBAO model is extremely uh, simple, right? It's just a embedding layer. Uh, and this is the, actually the one that we want, right? We want to learn the weights um, of this. We want to learn uh, the resulting matrix where we have the rows for each uh, as all the words. And then we have the embedding size as its representation for each word. And to check that it works in the end, you could do something like the, you could check what is the embedding of the word uh, as they did in the paper. Well, this was more for, I guess, uh, interest, but maybe one could do this to, to verify it as well. Like this uh, embedding of a woman and then see that queen is very close to that space as they sort of replicate the paper a little bit. But um, uh, that's one idea. Uh, but anyways, uh, the, the, the thing that I want to get across here is how the, the algorithm looks like. 
So I actually think this is like the most important part <laughs> so that you understand how it works. Uh, because the other stuff is more specific to what I've done uh, or just an example kind of. And uh, I'll, I think I will actually copy paste in all that code because it's um, like in, pr in reality, you wouldn't want to do the way that I've done here. So I'll explain what I've done and then I'll explain what you want to do uh, if you really want to make it sort of a, uh, to, to actually make it useful in some way. But so basically, I just took a raw text, uh, some, some document of some text, just not that large, just some text. Uh, and I just read all of that into memory, right? That's not something you want to do in reality, but uh, you want to, you know, have a class uh, and, and iterate and sort of load it on demand. But here we uh, then uh, in, use Spacey to get the, um, the dictionary, and then we tokenize the text uh, and we sit, store all of that in RAM, right? That's won't be possible for two large documents. Then we have a vocabulary, which is the set of our tokenized text. We create a, two dictionaries, one that maps the word to an index and one that ma maps an index to a word. So sort of the reverse mapping. And then we gener generate the data uh, and we, again, store all of this in memory here. This is, uh, this is just for educational purposes. This is not something you want to use. But so uh, here, for example, uh, you create the context by iterating and taking two words before, two words after. Um, and then we have the target as the word in the middle. We do context indices. Uh, we convert so that we actually get uh, an index instead of a word here because this will be a string. So we map that into the actual index for that word and we do the same for the target. And that's one example in our data. So that's the create data set uh, function. Um, you know, what you want to do in reality <clears throat> is probably, you know, uh, take some extremely large data set like uh, wiki text or something like that, uh, and then load that using torch text or some other way uh, that's efficient. And then, uh, uh, you know, um, create a, a class for the actual data loading. Uh, you could also do that here, um, but uh, this is just an example here. And then in the main function here, uh, we basically uh, specify the embedding size, we create our data set from that document, we have cross entropy loss, we initialize the network, uh, optimizer as Atom, uh, context data and labels. So we, we use, um, for the neural network, we're gonna have input uh, to the network and then outputs, right, uh, to match the label. So we just uh, created by iterating and taking the first element of each in the data, because in the data we uh, return context indices and target index. Then we create a data set, tensor data set, and we create a data loader, and then uh, we just train the CBA model for, uh, I don't know, let's say 100, uh, 200 epochs or so. So Let's just uh, see if this runs. Now, there are a lot of things you would want to do, right? As I said, you want to use a larger data set. You want to load it efficiently. You want to also then check that it uh, actually produces worthwhile embeddings uh, by maybe checking the embedding space um, and um, uh, to, to, to actually check that it does uh, something valuable. But in this example here, I just wanted to show you, uh, give you sort of uh, an idea of how it would look like and uh, how the model looks like in code. Uh, and I don't think it's too difficult to generalize this to, uh, to the uh, sort of a replicate of the paper. Uh, but anyways, uh, as some kind of measure that it works, we can see that it does learn to predict the word better. Uh, as we can see, the loss increases uh, from seven to now two and, or three. Um, all right, that was actually it for this video. I wanted to keep this relatively short and just show you the most important parts.